how does the nervous system get wired up? How do neurons know where to go? How can we explain something really complicated using a series of really simple calculations? How does the cortex process information? What computations does it perform? And how is it that doing those computations allow us to, for example, see? How important smells in the environment drives different patterns of activity what individual neurons and groups of neurons encode about the world. How the receptor cells in the inner ear turn a physical stimulus into a neural signal. How electrical currents in neurons uh, generate their firing patterns. How the nervous system gets wired up during development. How metabolism affects the brain. How the bone brain is built and how is it regulated. As we learn more about the brain, how it develops and how it functions, it turns out that progress in understanding this complex structure requires that scientists come together from many different disciplines. The department uh, is really, really supportive of interdisciplinary research and taking all sorts of different avenues and angles towards attacking a single core scientific question. Our strength is, is really exploring many different diverse aspects of how the, how the brain works and how it gets wired up. That's really a reflection of how this department was started. And I think that really provides a rich and stimulating environment um, because neuroscience is so interdisciplinary. One of the things that's so important in the original founding of the department is that Steve Kofler brought this idea that you could do science not with a technique, not as an anatomist or a biochemist or a physiologist, but on a system. His real premise in founding the department was to bring people in who could bring different kinds of techniques to bear on that. We've been working together since 1956. Six, yes. it, in, first in, in London for two years in Katz's department. And then uh, when we had finished uh, postdoctoral training there for a while, we came back to Steve's lab in Baltimore at Johns Hopkins. First one, Potter, myself, and David, and Steve, you were all invited to come to the Department of Pharmacology uh, at Harvard Medical School as a group. Steve had a big, very big role, of course, in the department in arranging its, its character and the people who were there. He wanted to start a new project. He had a particular guess, which was current at the time, that a, that a new transmitter, a new class of transmitters, was going to be uh, GABA. But what its role was, it was not clear. And Steve's ambition was to find out what its real role was. They were going to have to do some chemical analysis to find out what the, if there's a new transmitter. So Steve said, well, we need a biochemist. So Steve came to um, NIH and interviewed me. Colleagues then advised me that biochemists should never go to a pharmacology department. It's the death of a biochemist is the exact quote. So this was the start of people learning about the other disciplines and applying the methods of the other disciplines to a common purpose. And it came about through Steve's sort of intuitive sense that we need the next thing, we need the next thing, we need the next thing, and then de facto. We, were, we had the makings of the Department of Neurobiology. We felt we were at the forefront of a new field. Steve told the dean that we really want a new department, and it would be a real departure from traditional medical school departments, which were built around techniques. And this would be a department built around an organ and how it functioned. And a very interesting organ, the brain. In a very contentious faculty meeting, uh, this was extensively discussed and then pretty overwhelmingly approved by the faculty. As far as we know, we were the first department of neurobiology. People think science is get the white coat, you have to look serious, and we, we had a different attitude. We were curious, we had fun, we felt more like explorers than scientists. There is a, a sense of quality around here that 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 was very important. Sense of how you show that something's really true, how to give a talk. The whole sort of feeling of we do things right in this department. We work on what we present and we make it as good as we possibly can. And we make it as clear as we possibly can. And it was started with FurPot. 
they worked on their lectures to the Harvard medical students together. And when they gave those lectures, they were without notes. They were memorized. Students thought, whoa, we've never had faculty like this give us lectures like this. When, when David and I came here with Steve, we, we were the ones who had to give the lectures to the medical students. We had to develop a course in neuroscience. So it was a, a joint effort in trying to deeply understand this and transmit a deep understanding to the medical students so that it would be memorable. Steve was sort of the father of the department. He set the standard how to devote yourself to science. Steve would wander around the department and drop into people's labs, come in, sit down, say, what are you doing? And sometimes, if you were doing something that he really liked, he would join in the experiment that you were doing. He was always around. His door was always open. He went to all the functions, seminars. He was asking the questions. He was driving things forward. He would come and stop in and look at what I was doing. He wanted to know what was going on in his family. One thing that struck me from the beginning when I came to the department was how close everybody was. It was like a family. We had dinner together fairly often. In those days, we would have what was called evening meetings where people presented their research. And I think that spirit has continued uh, to now, even though the department's quite large. The lunch room was really important. It was the center of everything. It was the center of the lunch talks. We had evening meetings every six weeks. They happened there, the Christmas party, a beer hour every Friday. <laughs> Weekly beer hours on Friday which I often sort of build my schedule around, to be, to be completely honest with you. Uh, I think a, a lot of people would probably lie if they said that that's not the case for them, too. The social environment here, I would say it's very friendly, uh, very collegial, and also very um, intellectually stimulating. This is a community um, with a deep commitment to the highest level of science. People are very social, very intense and rigorous. They're fantastic scientists and there's fantastic work that's being done here. In the department, we have about 350 people. We have 33 faculty members. There are about 130 postdocs. We have 125 PIN students and there are about 60 staff members. From the most junior scientist to the most senior established investigator, there's a really strong mentoring structure in place that uh, works and enables everybody to succeed. The PhD program in neuroscience is centered in neurobiology, but it extends across the entire university. So there's a huge number of faculty who are involved in mentoring and training the students. The other thing that's really great is we have fantastic students. It's the postdocs and students to a large extent who really determine the culture of the department in a day-to-day -day way. One of the great things about the department is the diversity of students from all over the world, from all sorts of backgrounds, even from all sorts of scientific backgrounds. The students are actually a, a really fun aspect of the program here because we have them do rotations with different laboratories. And so the students are kind of like vectors of transmission between the laboratories. And I, I think that's a really powerful and healthy aspect of the department. What shouldn't be underestimated is the training of neuroscientists that has occurred at Harvard Medical School over the years. This department has populated corridors of neuroscience across the country and around the world. And I think that, in a sense, might be the greatest legacy. I was in Marge Livingstone's lab at the time, but I took all of the courses that the first year graduate students took. What I remember is that that was really one of the most intellectually exciting times in my life. I mean, I, it felt like, like I was prying my head open and just pouring in all this fascinating knowledge about the nervous system. And the class was so much fun to interact with. We argued over dinner, we stayed up late talking about neuroscience or the projects we were doing. It was just a really remarkable time for me and it made all the difference in, in my life. And part of the reason is that it's amazing to be here is because of the legacy of the department. Neurobiology as a modern field was founded right here. It's really cool when you take a seminar in a class and you see actual figures, like the actual drawings from seminal papers on the wall right there, like as you're learning right next to them. There's been extraordinary growth in the field of neurobiology over the past 50 years. I've 
been lucky enough to, to be part of the field for most of that time. So for me, it's really extraordinary to, to see how the information that's been put together by you know tiny, tiny steps has led to this huge change in our concept of ourselves in the world. It's a huge privilege to be able to work on whatever you're curious about. Science is scary because you don't know what's going to happen. If you did, it wouldn't be science, right? And that's most clear in a department like this, where I think people have core values of curiosity and just intense engagement in each other's work.